Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm doing a little bit more demonstration than kind of explaining. Uh, we're going to be talking about ways that you can customize the Python uh, interactive prompt, the REPL, which uh, read, evaluate, print loop, as my YouTube comments have helpfully told me since I didn't know what it meant in the, in the last, or I guess it was a couple videos ago. Anyway, uh, let's jump into it and show some ways that you might want to customize the interpreter. Um, so let's talk about the first one, and this one is just kind of like a real huge annoyance to me. <laughs> um, if you have an interpreter in Python and you type exit, it helpfully prints out this message that you should type exit with parentheses or hit control D. But what if it just exited? Wouldn't that be great? Um, and I'm going to show you how we can do that today. Um, so let's... Um, Let's show you how I would do that just by modifying code directly in the interpreter, and then I'll show you how we can make this permanent. And so if we look at this exit object, it is actually a site built -in quitter object. It's not actually a function, um, and that's kind of how we get this special you know, output here. You know, if we call wrapper on exit, you'll see that we actually get that string back that's printed here. And so it's it's not doing anything super special to print this, it's just it's, a, it's an object and it has a special wrapper. Um, but we can actually modify the behavior of that um, that wrapper and cause it to actually exit. So if we look at this, uh, the wrapper function here, this is that function that is print or is returning this result. But we can make this function do something else. Um, and uh, the calling of this exit function is actually what causes it to quit. So if we change this wrapper from just returning a string to having some sort of side effect, like calling itself, uh, now if we type exit on the interpreter, it exits Python exactly how we want it. Um, but let's show how we can make this permanent. And the way you make this permanent is by making a Python RC file or a Python startup file. So we're gonna we're gonna basically take this same little bit of code here and put that into a file. So let's you know startup.py and put some some code in here. Um, you know if we run this, it doesn't actually do anything because it's just modifying that code there. Uh, but we can use this special environment variable Python startup and point that to that startup.py file. And now if we run the interpreter and we type exit, it just exits, which is pretty cool. So this is kind of the, you know, <laughs> if you get nothing out of this, you can use Python startup to customize the Python interpreter. Now what I actually do, let me pull that up. Oh, we only have Firefox today, that's fine. Um, I actually have a Python startup file in my dot files. And the way I hook that up is I have this Python RC file. This contains some code. We'll talk about this in a second. And I also set in my bash RC, let me increase the font size so you guys can actually see this. I set Python startup here to uh, a file in my home directory, this .python RC file. And the contents of my Python RC is this code here. Uh, which I'll show you why that's useful in a second. So first, let's show <laughs> what it's actually fixing. Uh, so Python 3 added tab complete to the interpreter. So if you do tab, you know, you, you get, you know, attributes that are on the OS module if you do os.tab. In Python 2, this was not the case. And if you typed a tab, you would just get literal tab characters here, <laughs> which is not so useful. Um, but we can actually sort of hack readline to enable this. And that's that's what this code does here, is it sets uh, it sets this tab completion on the readline object. And if we actually uh, make a Python RC file that has this, I've actually disabled Python startup just for the video's sake here. Um, but if we you know modify this startup file and put this same code in here, um, I don't remember why I needed to import RL completer. I think this, you know, this import had some side effect that set up tab completion. But if we set that now and we do Python startup equals startup.py and run Python 2, you'll see that if we import OS and do tab, we now get tab completion in Python 2, which is pretty cool. But anyway, that's that's uh, that's Python startup. Um, 
hopefully, hopefully this is useful. Hopefully you can find some interesting uses for this. Uh, oh, another thing that you can do is, you know, if you have like a function that you use all the time, so like, um, I don't know, I often do a pretty print when I'm you know, debugging stuff. And this might be a nice way to kind of add a shortcut for that. So if we import pprint, pprint, thought pprint, o, oh, and if we do Python startup this, and you know, you can do pp of you know, some arbitrary object, and any globals that get introduced as part of this startup script end up as globals in your interpreter. But anyway, hopefully that's useful. Uh, if you guys want me to explain some other stuff or do some other similar demos to this, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.